Hello, it's Wednesday the 1st of July 2020 and I just wanted to talk a little bit today about body mass index or BMI as it relates to my journey. Jo, will you read us what BMI actually is? The BMI is defined as the body mass divided by the square of the body height and is universally expressed in units of kilograms per metre squared. Now I'm not very clever, I don't do kilograms and metres squared and all that, but I do know a really simple way of working out my current BMI. To do this I take my weight in pounds, times it by 703, then divide it by my height in inches, and then divide it by my height in inches again. So that's weight in pounds times 703, divided by your height in inches, divided by your height in inches. So for me, my current weight uh, this week is 135 pounds, which I'm gonna times by 703, then I'm gonna divide it by 62, which is my height in inches, five foot two, then I'm gonna divide it by 62 again, and my total BMI is? 24.1. Um, 24.1. Now, when we're relating to BMI, 20 to 25 is a normal healthy weight. Over 25 and up to 30 is overweight. Over 30 and up to 35 is obese. And then I believe I'm right in saying over 35 and you're in the realms of morbidly obese, which is where I started my weight loss journey. So when I came to Slimming World five years ago, just over five years ago, I thought I'd cracked it. I'd lost eight and a half stone. I'd got myself down to 13 stone eight. I bought my first pair of Levi's in a size 16 and I was wiggling around the house like I'd got somewhere. And Joe said to me one day, look, mum, I'm sorry, but your back size is still huge. <laughs> there was me, you know, in my size 16 jeans thinking, but being a size 16 when you've been a size 26 feels great. But joining Slimming World at 13 stone 8 gave me a BMI of... 34.7. Which is at the top of the obese category, not the overweight category, the obese category. And I thought I'd made it. I came to Slimming World, I started working the plan, I started losing weight and I started loving the way of eating and I set my first target. My first target, <coughs> excuse me, was 11 stone 11, which gave me a BMI of 30.1, which is at the bottom of the obese category and I really thought I'd made it at 11 stone 11, but no, kept going. My second target was 10 stone 10, which gave me a BMI of 27.4. 27.4. Now 27.4 is slap bang in the middle of overweight. And again, you know, there was me, I thought I'd made it. But when I related it back to the BMI, you know, what my doctor would expect, I was still slap bang in the middle of overweight. I'm five foot two. So that was me at 10 stone 10. I kept going. And I set my next target at nine stone nine, which gave me a BMI of? 24.6. 24.6. I was in the healthy weight bracket, but I was right at the top of it. But for a long time, you know, I was kind of like, that's enough. That's enough, I'm in a healthy weight. But the longer I've been doing this and, and following on from the experience that I've had over the last six months of gaining weight and going back up to 10 stone four and a half and then getting myself back together enough to want to lose weight because I can't do this unless I want to do it. I can't do it under sufferance. I can't do it by deprivation and starvation. I've got to want to do it. And I'm in that place again where I want to be slim more than I want to eat crap. So getting myself back into that place I've got myself to nine stone nine, and now I'm back past that, and I'm back in a healthy weight category. But what I've been looking at over the weekend and up to today is, where do I want to go with this? Where do I want to go with this weight loss? Now, it's not enough for me anymore to say I'm at the top or near the top of a healthy weight category. 
When I used to be slap bang in the middle of the overweight category, it resonated with me, this is not the right place to be. And I remember thinking at the time, the right place to be would be slap bang in the middle of the healthy weight category. So I haven't worked out what weight that would be. But today I'm, what did we say, Joe? 24.6? 24.1. 24.1, sorry. I know that what I'm aiming for now as a goal, not as a target because I'm not looking at a target weight, what I'm aiming at now in my head as a goal for me is the weight that would have me slap bang in the middle of the normal healthy category. So I'm aiming to get a BMI of 22.5. I haven't got a clue as of this moment, what weight that would have me at. I'm prepared to trust in what the medics say I should be, and I'm prepared to go with Slimming World to get me to a BMI of 22.5. I know this plan can do that. I don't want to set a target. I've had a target on Slimming World. I've had several. I've had my 11 stone 11, my 10 stone 10, my 9 stone 9. Then I had my 9 stone target, which I hovered around. I went down to 8 stone 8 at one point. Um, I hovered around 8 stone 11 for a long time. And then the way my mind works, if somebody says you've got to be between that and that, there's a rebel in me that goes, I'm not going to do that. I don't want to do that don't want to be told what I have to do and I actually found that having a target or having several targets over four years that were always coming down actually put me under pressure we're all different what works for one won't work for another and I found actually living on target having to focus on being three pounds above or three pounds below put me under too much pressure the wrong kind of pressure it made me want to eat and the thing with me is once you give me a target and you say right Jane you're the, the target that I had, which I have now done away with, was nine stone. So you can actually be between, be between eight stone, eleven and nine stone. I've got to be in that part. My head doesn't want me to be between nine stone and nine stone three. My head wants me to, between, to be between eight stone, eleven and nine stone. And when I'm not in that place, then I beat myself up. So this time, at this portion of my journey, I'm actually prepared to say... I started this journey again, this part, this part of my journey again, at midnight on the 25th of May. So until midnight on the, at the 25th of May next year, 2021, I am not setting a target. If I ever set another target again, it will be a decision I make next year. But currently I have no desire to have a target just to save £5 a week at group. Now I know I can't keep losing weight, losing weight, losing weight and stay at Slimming World. There are parameters, do we say? Slimming World, in their book, give me two weights I can be between. And I think those weights are something like 7 stone 3 to 9 stone 10. Now, there is no way, no way I'm aiming to get down into the lower 8s or into the 7s. I think those weights are ideal if you're 16 to 18 years old and, you know, and you've got your whole life ahead of you. I'm nearly 64. I don't need to be that weight. But what I do intend to be is around a BMI of 22.5, slap bang in the middle of a healthy weight. That's my goal. Do you think there should be more encouragement a group to set your weight in a healthy range? Actually, Joe, that's a really good point because we did talk about that a while ago, didn't we? Well, when I first came to Slimming World, and, and I understand, you know, um, I love Slimming World. I wouldn't do any other plan. I don't want to be seen to be criticising it because I love Slimming World. It's, it's given me my life back. I would probably not be here today if it wasn't for Slimming World, and that's not an exaggeration. But when I've, when I've joined Slimming World like the 20 times I've done it over 40 odd years, I've never been advised by a consultant that you should set your target at approximately this or approximately this. And I don't think consultants are trained to do that. And there's a reason for that, because everything in Slimming World is a recommendation or a suggestion. They are not health people. They're not medics. They can't say, Jane, you should be between this and this. It's in the book, but you're not even really encouraged to read the, that part of the book, are you? And we never have um, an image therapy where we talk about what our, you know, our ideal healthy weights would be. And we never have issues in group where we actually say how much we weigh. And that's probably a good thing for 99% of people because you don't want to be sitting there saying, 
oh, today I weighed 18 stone nine and a half and I've put on three pounds. I mean, that would be bloody soul destroying, wouldn't it? Especially if you're starting like, you know, I started my weight last journey at 22 stone. I don't want to sit there in front of 70 people and say I weigh 22 stone. That's my business. I don't think it's something for us to broadcast. But what I do think, and maybe there's more of a place for this on YouTube and Instagram and such like, is let's get talking about what's healthy. You know, I came to group, I set my target at 11 stone 11. That still had me in obese, the obese category. And, and there's no way my consultant was ever going to say, no, no, you can't do that. That still has you in obese. You need to be aiming to at least be overweight, fat so. <laughs> my consultant's lovely. She'd never say anything nasty to anybody. But you see these comedy things, don't you, like Little Britain and that? Can you imagine that, that person behind the desk in Little Britain? Come on, fat so, you need to at least, and I'm talking to me here, not you. You need to at least be aiming to be in the overweight category. You haven't even got your backside out of obese yet. But I need somebody to say that to me. I need that sort of reality check that I get from Joe when he said, your backside still looks huge in those jeans because I can kid myself and I can be floating around. And some people might be happy to be a size 16, but I wasn't. I'd come from a size 26, but I still wasn't slim in a size 16 because that's my body shape. You know, I, I, I just think that we need to be honest with ourselves and we need to not limit ourselves because so many of us have got the potential to go a lot further than we have. I think I could have maintained 11 stone 11 like that. I could have still overeaten, I could have still eaten junk and processed food and I could have maintained 11 stone 11 like that. That's not the answer. The answer is not maintaining being obese. The answer is getting healthy, getting, getting your life back, being able to go anywhere and do anything and not worry about, will I be able to fit in this? Will I be able to manage that? Can I walk as far as all my friends? Can I go to the gym with my friends or are they all slim and I'm fat and I can't cope with that? Can I go for a walk with my family and know that if they decide to do seven miles, I can do that? These are the realities of being slim. Can I go to a restaurant today and not choose the biggest, bulkiest, most fattening thing on the menu? Yeah, I can. But you know, when I was 22 stone, I couldn't. I didn't care what I ate as long as it was the biggest dish on the menu. And it absolutely stuffed me full because I wanted my money's worth and I was a greedy pig. I don't, I don't see it like that today. But that's the freedom, being a normal weight. And some of that weight has come off my brain, it must have done, because my thinking is quite different at this weight. And I know when I'm back in a healthy weight band on BMI, because I think differently, I feel differently. Body, mind and spirit, I am a different person when I'm in the right body. I used to feel trapped inside this huge fat... I was this big, you know, I was... I was trapped, I felt like me inside this inflated some, somebody else. But working towards getting a healthy BMI has given me so much freedom. So what I'm saying today, for myself and for everybody else, is would you look at your BMI? Now, you know, just have a look. You don't have to take it seriously, but it's worth having a look. Because we go to group, we set these weights, and I would say that in most groups, there are more people who are still in the overweight category at Target than there are who are in the healthy category. And I'm not naming and shaming anybody, it's not about that. It's just about, don't sell yourself short, look at your potential. Yeah, I don't think doctors are setting these like ranges to be, <clears throat> to make life hard for you. They're doing it to get healthy. you to the healthiest weight you can be, yeah. yeah, to make you feel your best. So you can live longer. So you can feel better in your 60s than you did when you were fat in your 30s or your 20s. And it is about enjoying life and, and for me, getting my life back. Doctors aren't going to say that at 5 foot 2 I should be between 7 stone 3 and 9 stone 10 because they're bullying me or they're picking on me. They don't know me from Adam. They're just saying that as a rule of thumb for a person of your height, this is a healthier place to be. And that's why they give you such a wide band, 7 stone 3 to 9 stone 10. You could be 16, 18 at the lower end. You could be 30 and, and probably have a BMI of 21 or 22. 
and you could still be post-menopausal like me, you know, I'm 10 years through the menopause and have a BMI that is still in a healthy thing. And I'll tell you what, when, when I went back up to 10 stone, 10 stone, four and a half, it shook me how fat I felt. It shook me how unhealthy I felt. It shook me how I was starting to get out of breath. And I was just saying to Joe today when we were walking up the hill, God Almighty, I am so grateful that I am not still 13 stone eight because that would be more than four stone heavier than I am today. And it would be like carrying a five-year-old up that hill. I was laughing when Joe turned one, he weighed 21 pounds and that was enough to carry her out. Yeah, yeah, it's like a particularly steep bit on the walk, isn't there? And you were having to start pushing on your legs with your yeah. hands to get I mean, yourself up it. It's a really steep little hill. And, and I, at 10 stone four, I was doing that pressing on my thigh to get myself up the steepest part of the hill, like to push myself up it. And then you were getting a dicky hip. Then, yeah, then my hips started to ache. And, he, you know, this morning we flew up that hill, didn't we? Yep. We did it at high speed this morning. He's like, come on then, let's go, turn it up. And whew, we flew up that hill. And that's the difference, you know, between nine stones six and 10 stone four, that's the difference. And that's the difference between a BMI today that is in a healthy weight and a BMI that four weeks ago was in an overweight state. So yeah, there you go. So I'm just gonna repeat that formula very quickly. Take your weight in pounds, times it by 703, then divide it by your height in inches, then divide it by your height in inches again. If you've got a um, smart speaker, I'm pointing over here because my Google's over there and then my Alexa's over there. If you've got a smart speaker, just give them the formula, just give them your weight in pounds, say times it by 703, divide it by whatever inch height you are, divide it by where, and they'll give you the answer. I mean, that's, that's, it's as easy as that. You don't even need to get a calculator out. And if you haven't got a smart thing, get your calculator out. Or if you're really smart like Joe, just do it with a piece of paper. But it's a long time since I went to school. Anyway, that's it. I hope this is of interest to somebody and actually motivates some people to realise that you have the potential to go as far as you like. As far as you like. Take care. I'll see you Saturday. Bye.